everybody and welcome back to a new day of Flex Topics. I am Shay and for those who don't know, I am a phlebotomy instructor. I own and operate Fantastic Phlebotomy School located in Charlotte, North Carolina. And today I wanted to talk about needle selection. I have a lot of people who reach out to me in reference to what needle to choose and why you choose those needles. So, for us as phlebotomists, the most commonly used needle is the 21 gauge, right? So, it comes straight or in your butterfly form. So, the big question is, which one do I choose? Now, when I first started out as a phlebotomist, and of course I worked with a lot of older phlebotomists who in their eyes, you're not a good phlebotomist unless you can operate this straight needle here. Because these butterfly needles, right, they're very costly. And everything in healthcare is cost and efficiency. What can we utilize that's not going to cost us a lot of money and we're not going to use a lot of the materials? So, for us, yes, we have this butterfly, but again, it's super expensive. They only come 50 in a box with the style here, and they run about $90 to $100 a box. Versus with these straight needles here, they're about $22 to $24 a box and you get 48 of them. So, you know, most of the time you'll have more access to these than you do these. Now, your choices, right? Why would you choose the butterfly versus the straight needle? Now, for us or for me, shall I say, I like the straight needle. You have some phlebotomists who prefer the butterfly needle, and that's because of these lovely wings here, right? The wings give you a little bit more stability, meaning you can hold it a little bit more. Of course, the cording, right, gives you a little bit more leeway to be able to sit it down or not have it in your hand. Whereas with the straight needle, you have to hold it the entire time. Because if you let it go, of course, it's going to fall out of the patient's arm. So, that's another thing you have to keep in mind. Now, straight needles give you more extension. So, for those obese patients that you have, or for people whose veins are just anchored very deeply, this is what you want. And that's because, again, this butterfly needle is not going to give you the extension that you need. As you can see, right, needles super short, but with a straight needle, right once you take that top off it gives you more of an extension to be able to get down in there like you need to so depending on the patient and guys we never repair the needle i was so wrong for that but this is just and then explaining but in the real world we never ever repair the needle but just to let you see it, the straight needle gives you more of an extension, allows you to get a little deeper, because in some instances, you may need just a little bit more of a reach that your butterfly needle is not going to give you. Now, these are the exact same gauge, 21, 21. I don't know what it is or the misconception behind these wings, but people feel like these wings just treat you better. It doesn't. It's all in the phlebotomist. If you're pulling that skin back, it makes a nice smooth incision. You're not fighting against the skin to try to insert the needle. So the key is to stretch that skin out so you get a nice smooth insertion. So when it comes to butterfly versus straight, I myself, I love the straight needle. I feel like all phlebotomists should be able to operate the straight needle. And that's because butterflies are not always available. They are very costly, which means if the facility is not making a lot of money, you're not going to see a lot of these. Some places even put you on restriction versus how many you can get or how many you can use. So if your site or your office it's only allowed a hundred of these in a month's time. 
you're seeing anywhere from 40 to 50 patients a day, which means you kind of have to do an any, many, money, mo kind of situation. Who gets the butterfly needle and who doesn't? Sometimes you have to be honest with the patients and let them know like, hey, this is the same size as this. And once you kind of explain it to them, they're a little bit more willing to allow you to use the 22, I'm sorry, the 21 straight, but we also have the 22 straight needle as well, which is just, of course, a gauge smaller, but same concept, right? Because sometimes for the patient, it's more mental than anything. So once you allow them to see the equipment and you kind of explain to them how they differ or how they're similar, they're more willing to allow you to use the one that they didn't really want to allow you to use in the beginning. So for myself and for experienced phlebotomists, I notice that we all seem to favor the straight needle. But for new phlebotomists, they kind of seem to favor this butterfly needle. Also, the butterfly needle sometimes hinders your collection because of the cording and things like that. So you as the phlebotomist, you have to kind of determine which needle best fits your particular situation. All equipment is not going to work for every single phlebotomist. You have some phlebotomists who dislike the butterfly needle, will not use it at all. And then you have some who live and swear by it. So you just have to kind of figure out what phlebotomist you are. Are you a straight needle kind of phleb or are you a butterfly needle kind of phleb? But for all of those butterfly needle phlebs out there, I would suggest that you kind of perfect your skill when it comes to this straight needle because this will save you, this will not. And depending on how difficult the stick is, you will waste three and four of these versus just using this straight needle. Another thing, yes, the butterfly needle gives you a flash or an indication that you've hit the vein, you've got it or you're close, right? Straight needle does not. You do not have any indication of a successful venipuncture until you puncture the tube for the blood to aspirate inside of it. Other than that, there is no indication. It's just solely based off of your skill and your knowledge. So you would have to determine whether or not that stick is successful once you go ahead and pop that tube on there. Another thing, if you miss the vein and you want to adjust or attempt to adjust, my suggestion, and it always seems to work, and every phlebotomist has their own way of doing things. I like to keep the tube punctured so that once I do become successful or I do meet that vein, I'm going to get some type of indication into the tube. Of course, I'm going to change my tube because the tube is now unable to be used properly. The additive to blood ratio is not going to be what you need it to be. So of course you're gonna change that tube and start over, but the tube that was initially on allows you to know whether or not your adjustment has been successful. You have a lot of people or phlebotomists or nurses who do what we call, or what I call, play the violin, where they're just kind of hoping that they're gonna get it. And that's not how we wanna be. In order to have a successful adjustment, you have to feel. Once the needle has entered the skin, you can touch it. So the only way for you to see whether your vein has rolled or if it's a little deeper than you intended or whatever is going on that's keeping you from having a successful collection, you can kind of figure out what to do to fix it. But please, by all means, do not be a violin player. Do not be one of those because your vein, it only has a couple places it can go. It can either go to the left, it's going to go to the right, or it's going to be a little deeper than you initially intended when you placed your needle inside the vein or you went to do venipuncture. So for all of those out there who are trying to figure out what needles best, me, Shay, I love this straight needle. And again, you have a lot of flips who love this butterfly and they swear by this butterfly. 
But again, this is more costly. And everything for us in healthcare is cost and efficiency. So if it's going to cost your employer more money, it's not going to always happen. So you have to become familiar with what's going to be available to you most of the time. And it's always nine times out of 10 going to be this straight needle. Unless you work in pediatrics or you work with a lot of geriatric patients, sometimes you won't even get a butterfly needle in the house. You literally won't even have any in the building. You got to kind of have to go with the flow and use what you have. And most of the time what you have is this wonderful straight needle here. So for all of you flabs out there who kind of want to figure out which needle is best for you, you just figure it out over time. But my suggestion to all flabs is to never get comfortable using just the butterfly needle because in some settings you will not have access to the butterfly needle. All you have is a straight needle and you need to be able to maneuver that straight needle. And it also helps with your experience. So you won't just be a flab that's only used to using a butterfly needle. It will hinder you and your collection so much that when those difficult sticks come, you won't know what to do. You're just kind of stuck because what you're used to it's not there, it's not available. So that kind of makes you seem like you can't do your job and you never wanna have any type of impression given off that you're unable to do your job. And especially due to not having a butterfly needle. You never wanna have to turn somebody away simply because your skill doesn't allow you to use the straight needle. Now, in some instances, we do have to turn patients away if they do require a butterfly needle. And normally it won't be this 21, it'll be a 23. But if you don't have access to it, then of course you, you can't do your collection because that patient needs that 23 in order to have a successful, healthy collection, meaning no hematomas, no discomfort, no bruises, no pain, anything like that. Because at the end of the day, you're making the final decision. Nobody is there saying, hey, use that 21 butterfly. Hey, use that 21 straight. You have to kind of figure that out on your own. So for all the flags out there who have questions about what needle to use, why you choose your needle, please share it. Let other flabs know for our next topic in conversation so we can have some things to share. There are a lot of new flabs entering the world of phlebotomy every day and are always looking for useful information to help them out with their draws or if they're nervous or they're encountering a hard stick for the first time. We want to be able to share our experiences. So any flabs out there, if you have any questions or any inputs on the straight needle versus the butterfly needle please leave it at the bottom comment send me emails you can reach me at bangtastic b-e-i-n-t-a-s-t-i-c phlebotomy at gmail.com i look forward to all of the questions and we will be back with more videos so please drop your topics i'm always looking for new topics to talk about we'll always share common topics things that we hear about or questions that we hear all the time that need to be addressed so for all of those flabs out there, if you want to share, please comment, please drop a link for anything that might help our fellow flabs out there. And I look forward to sharing more information with you guys. And I will see you guys next time. Everybody have a great weekend because it is Friday. So happy Friday to everybody. And I will see you guys back here for our next topic. And again, if you have topics that you want to share, please drop them below or send me an email. You guys have a great weekend. Bye.